stretcher during your morning work meeting. An ocean tug rescued a large ship by himself during the night, dispatcher is saying. And now, the ship right. must be brought into the harbor for the <laughs> Emily, Theodore, and Hank, please meet Petra at the harbor entrance right away. Myself. 
said Theodore sternly. So Theodore borrowed Hank's towboat and set off with our boat. But then he realized he didn't know where the our boat lived. Where is your home? asked Theodore. Ah, uh, I have no home, said our boat. I used to live by myself at a nice wooden dock. But then one day a big storm smashed the dock and carried me away. The rowboat showed Theodore his bent oar and the old tow rope was still dangling behind him. So now I just drifted around, bumping from this shore to that. Of course, if I were made of metal, I could look forward to rusting. But I suppose you can't have everything. Theodore had an idea. I'll find you a nice new place to live. That's right. We'll find you a new home, shouted Hank as if he had just thought of it that very moment. A new home for me will be found, Master Arbuckle. Then again, probably not yet. Theodore was determined he'd be the one to find Arbuckle home. But Hank thought he'd come along anyway. Oh, you really shouldn't go to all the trouble, sir. But since you're looking, my new dog shouldn't be too sunny or my wood will crack. Or, or too rainy or, or I'll rot. And, and it shouldn't be too in betweeny or uh, this Herbert has lots of good dogs, said Theodore. He has a sandy beach, said Hank. Any clams, said Arbo. What? replied Theodore. Clams, shivered Arbo. The worst who keep you up day and night with their clapping. I don't like noise. There's probably a very nice dock for you here at the Grain Terminal, said Theodore, leading the little boat along. Oh, well, uh, wait makes me sneeze, said Arvo. But you know, I remember where there's a dock shut at Hank suddenly. But Theodore acted like he didn't hear Hank and he set off again. you a new home, said Peter. No doubt about it. And again, probably not. Theodore, called Hank. I've an idea. I can do it by myself, Hank, said Theodore. Yeah, I can. It was an enormous sneeze for such a small boat. Would you like to blow your nose, said Hank, our Blow your nose, said Theodore, himself, thinking. Blue nose. That's it. I know the perfect place for our boat. But Theodore, called Hank. Don't you want to hear about my idea, Theodore? The Blue Nose, said Theodore proudly. She's the most famous sailing ship in the whole world. She has a bell, said Hank. Bells, said our boat. Oh, they make a lot of noise. Oh, I don't like noise. Who knows? I was thinking, said Theodore in his most convincing voice, that you might need a nice lifeboat. Thank you, Theodore, replied Brunos. But I already have plenty of lifeboats. I know it was a great dock, said Hank. Right near, I can find our boat a home by myself, Hank, said Theodore. And with that, Theodore set off again with our boat, leaving Hank behind.
swimming dock that looked just the right size for our boat. Any clams? said our boat. Oysters, said Theodore quickly. Oysters, said our boat to itself. Hmm. They'd probably like some company, said Hank. Oh, oysters are nice and quiet, concluded our boat. myself, just like an ocean tub does. Oh, is that why you were acting so strangely, said Hank. Well, you did all the towing, and you told him about the oysters. Well, said Theodore after a moment, I guess we did it together. That's what a team does, right, said Hank. They work together. Are we a team, Theodore? Sure we are, replied Theodore. Hank smiled as happy as smile, and the two friends sailed for home. Theodore, said Hank, do you think ocean-going tubs always work alone? I hope not, Hank, said Theodore. I hope not.